we have a lot of helpful information to present for you. So I'm just going to go ahead and get started on our slides here. Uh, give you a quick presentation overview. Uh, I'll cover a little bit of the steel moment frame background, some of the testing and design codes that are relevant uh, for today's uh, design designers, um, as well as going into talking about the pre-qualified special moment frame connections, followed by a break, and then Brandon Winter will then um, start on the second half of the presentation for you. So going back a little bit of uh, background on moment frame design, um, they actually were using steel frames uh, starting in the 1990s. Uh, back then, uh, frames were actually uh, built up using angles and plates as sections since uh, rolled flanges um, weren't available just yet. They actually performed pretty well uh, given the um, evidence from the 1906 San Francisco earthquake. Uh, the frames actually did fairly well. Unfortunately, it was the, the fire that um, may cause a lot of the damage um, from the 1906 San Francisco uh, event. Um, transitioning to the 60s up into the 90s, um, as technology improved, uh, the trend in the field actually um, moved away from the bolted connection and towards a welded connection in the field since there's a little bit more adjustments and give um, to performing a welded connection in the field um, as well as having just simply quite simply the availability of the, the um, electricity and uh, welding equipment available uh, on to, you know, for job sites. And as we get into the 90s um, and desktop computers become more prevalent, the steel moment frame design, again, uh, trended away from a lot of these moment connections to more of a concentrated area where MoMA frames would be designed for and the trade-off would be having fewer of these labor-intensive connections um, but with larger, much larger members. Um, research was being uh, conducted in starting in the 70s and from there there were various different uh, performances that were observed. So starting from, I mean, we have earthquakes and information about performances past earthquakes, but I'll start with the Loma Prieta here in 1971. Um, that event, majority of the damage that was actually observed that you visually can see were masonry and concrete. So um, unfortunately, the welded steel MoMA frame didn't get as much scrutiny or attention and so it, it was also that there quite simply was not as many steel welded moment frames uh, available uh, just yet. So there were some damages that were observed. And so along those lines uh, where they were uh, damages to the welds, they were simply just repaired um, and just we kind of moved on. Loma Prieta was the next uh, significant event. Um, by then, there were more uh, welded steel moment frame uh, inventory in the um, in the market, and they appeared actually to have done well. Uh, there weren't significant uh, collapse, or there wasn't a, a headline news of a, a steel building that collapsed, um, and so there were at the same time still testing that was being done in academia where uh, they observed uh, welds to have uh, developed cracks um, from testing and it, again this is still this was relatively still new and uh, the area of study or the time of 
uh, focused on that was just uh, didn't get the spotlight just yet until we had the 1994 Northridge earthquake where we uh, observed uh, quite a bit of damage for the special moment frame and what was expected to be a very ductile um, energy dissipation mechanism just wasn't there. There were a lot of fractured uh, welds that were documented and quite frankly the um, a lot of the welds they actually were able to determine that it was pre-existing so even before the earthquake loaded the connection uh, to fracture the weld the f welds were actually uh, damaged already there was already fractured 